This guy said, flies in the north have wings 4% larger than flies in the south, and that proves evolution. Darwin is as fit as ever. An adaptation at breathtaking speed. Wow, wings 4% larger. That's the evidence? Are they desperate or dumb or blind, or what's the problem here? Then they tell the kids, we're going to learn to think critically. Boys and girls, do you think humans are still evolving? What kind of question is that? That's one of those questions like, have you stopped beating your wife yet? <laughs> wow, now let me think. If I say yes, I'm admitting I did. If I say no, I'm still doing it. Hey, did you know it is possible for the question to already have a built-in assumption? The question already has an assumption built in. That's not a fair question. And it's certainly not a question to learn to think critically. That's a Soviet-style indoctrination-type question. I would answer this and say, teacher, this question is poorly written. It assumes evolution has happened when it has not. It's like asking the question, why are elephants orange? Well, that's a tough question. Why are they orange anyway? They're not orange. And when they say, do you think humans are still evolving? In other words, you have to believe in evolution to even answer the question. So some kid's going to do this for homework tonight and get accounted wrong next time they meet for class because he, he doesn't believe evolution even happened. Then they say, how might the dinosaur's body heat problems have led to their extinction? They've got two assumptions in that one. How do you know they had body heat problems and how do you know they're extinct? You can't prove the extinction of anything. Well, unless you're all places at all times at the same time. Watch video number three about dinosaurs. They say, we've got evidence from homologous structures. Oh, what is that? Well, they'll say, boys and girls, you have two bones in your wrist, the radius and the ulna. Yep, I see that. And the alligator has two bones in his wrist. And look at this. They're called the radius and the ulna. See that, boys and girls? That proves we are related to an alligator. That's what they're telling them. These homologous structures provide evidence that these animals evolved from a common ancestor. A seal's flipper and a human arm have very different functions. I agree. What evidence might help show that both structures evolved from a forelimb of a common ancestor? This is thinking critically? A uh, duh. Maybe they have similar structures because they, because they have a common designer. Is that even considerable as an option? They say, well, we're going to take a course on comparative anatomy. The bird, the horse, and the human have similar forelimb structures. Yes, boys and girls, comparative anatomy provides further evidence of evolution. <coughs> The commonality suggests these animals are all related. They probably evolved from a common ancestor. This is a lie. They probably have a common designer. The forelimb of animals is amazingly complex. If you could get a machine to do what your arm does, you'd be a wealthy person. The human arm and forelimb and wrist are incredibly complex. But textbooks all over the world, I was in Germany last week, same thing. They teach the kids, this is evidence for evolution. No, they develop from different genes in the chromosomes. Evolutionists can't explain this and seldom discuss it. Why are these homologous structures coming from different genes? They'll say, oh, it's convergent evolution. Well, then you're making up a story. It's not science. We don't observe that, okay? Similar design might prove the same designer made them. The lug nut from a Pontiac will fit on the Chevy. You can go try it. They will. <coughs> that proves they both evolved from a Honda 14 million years ago. <laughs> See, it's an example of getting good observation and coming to the wrong conclusion. It's true many animals have a similar forelimb structure. I agree. They'll say, this, they must have had a common ancestor. Oh, now I disagree. It doesn't prove that at all. This helps prove we all came from a rock. Oh, now you're really going off your rocker on that one. They say, we've got evidence from development. Yes, boys and girls, the similarity between early stages and development of many different animals helped convince Darwin that all forms of life shared common ancestors. Darwin considered this by far the strongest single class of facts in favor of his theory. Ernst Haeckel, who made up this whole stupid idea, called it the biogenetic law. He said, yes, as the babies develop inside the mother, they go through the stages of evolution again. Fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. Just memorize the word farm, and you got it. It's called ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. This thing was only proven wrong in 1875. Okay? The evolutionary idea the sick mind Freud relied on most heavily in the manuscript is the maxim that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. That is, the development of the individual recapitulates the evolution of the entire species. This is what was taught in 1869, started by a guy named Ernst Haeckel. This textbook says, boys and girls, the presence of these fish-like structures in embryos of different species shows these animals have evolved from fish 
and share the basic pattern of fish development. It's as if the embryo retains a memory of its origins and starts to copy them during its development. These structures persist in adult fish. They say the embryo of a human has gills like a fish? Oh, you gotta be kidding. This is a lie proven wrong in 1875. It's not true. Those little folds of skin in the embryo develop into bones in the ear and glands in the throat. Go study your anatomy. They never have anything to do with breathing. I've seen people that have five or six chins and they can't breathe through any of them but the top one, okay? <laughs> Haeckel said the turning point in his thinking was when he read Darwin's Origin of Species in 1860, the year it got translated to German. Haeckel wanted to find some evidence for evolution. He liked the theory, a lot of people do, because it you know, gets rid of God. So Haeckel said, we've got to find a way to get some evidence for this theory. Nine years later, there still was no evidence. So Ernst Haeckel decided to help out. He was an embryology professor at the University of Jena. He had access to drawings of embryos of all kinds of different animals. That's what he taught. So he faked his drawings. He took a human and dog embryo and changed them and made them look alike. He made fake drawings of these embryos from all different animals. Here is a chart that Haeckel used. He traveled all over Germany and just about single-handedly converted the Germans to believing in evolution with his fake drawings. Now, here's the top. On the top is Haeckel's drawings. Underneath are actual photographs of those creatures. I guarantee, Paul, are they still teaching the embryology at Berkeley here as evidence for evolution? I don't know. Does anyone have a biology text? Anybody have a biology textbook? Biology textbook? I'll give it back. <laughs> See if they're still teaching that. Okay? Well, two years ago they were. Right? Two years ago they were. In the standard text. In the standard text here at Berkeley. Embryology is evidence for evolution. They don't do it. They don't teach that. It's wonderful. Haeckel was tried by his own university. Six professors held a trial. He confessed and said, well, I should feel utterly condemned were it not that hundreds of the best observers and biologists lie under the same charge. Everybody else lies, so I can lie too. This biogenetic law has become so deeply rooted in biological thought it cannot be weeded out in spite of its having demonstrated to be wrong. The biogenetic law is as dead as a doornail. Um, Richardson at St. George's Medical Hospital in London said, uh, Hegel confessed to drawing from memory and was convicted of fraud at the University of Jena, but the drawings persist. That's the real mystery. They still keep teaching this. 1998, Pensacola, Florida, University of West Florida was still using Hegel's exact chart the exact chart Haeckel drew is still used in the textbooks 125 years after it was proven wrong. There's, Darwin wrote his book in 1859. Haeckel faked the drawings in 1869. It was proven wrong in 1875, but they still teach it in textbooks all over America. Now, if they're not teaching it here at Berkeley, yay, I'm proud of you. It's about time. But this is the type of thing I'm talking about. They're using lies to support their theory. I debated Kenneth Miller, who teaches at Brown University, Rhode Island, on the radio. I debated him for 30 minutes. He won't do it again. I said, Dr. Miller, why are you still teaching embryology as evidence for evolution in your textbook? You know that it was proven wrong 125 years ago. He said, yes, and we're going to take it out of the next edition. Oh, it's about time. Now, I know it takes a while for textbooks to get up to date, but I think 125 years is long enough. <laughs> But I checked his 2000 edition and it was still in there. I don't know if it's in his 2004 edition or not, okay? But here's a 1998 edition still using the embryology as evidence for evolution. This one says, uh, they have common ancestry because of the presence of gills and tails, okay? Here's a 2000 textbook teaching biology uh, is uh, evidence for evolution from fish-like structures, okay? Here's a 2001 junior high textbook saying, the similarities provide evidence that these three animals evolved from a common ancestor because of the tiny gill slits. Here's another 2001 Hope Biology textbook saying they have gill slits, proof for evolution. Another one, 2001, another page, says the gills of fish is evidence of evolution here. This is a college textbook used in uh, 